Hey Chumbas, in this video we're going to be going over all of the achievements in Cyberpunk 2077. We've seen all the clips, we've seen all the memes. This game was a pretty buggy mess. Well, as of this video, it's still a buggy mess, but just slightly less buggy. There are 44 achievements, and according to Steam, I have put in 75 hours before actually completing the game. Now there's probably like five of those that were spent paused while I was going and doing other stuff, but still quite the grind. And just so you guys know, all of my Cyberpunk 2077 guides and the future ones for whenever they put out DLC are all gonna be in the playlist that's linked down in the description below, as well as in the little card off to the side. So if you wanna know when I upload those videos or any of the other achievement guides that I put up, which go out weekly, by the way. Go ahead and subscribe and like this video because it definitely does help when it comes to the uh, YouTube algorithm. And with all of that out of the way, let's go ahead and Delta and get into the video. Now for the first part of the video, we'll go over the story-related achievements as well as the ones related to the side character storylines. I'm gonna go through these in the order that you'd go through it all in order to get all of the achievements done without having to replay anything other than the final section. The first one we'll get is The Fool for Becoming a Mercenary. You'll get this one after completing the prologue which ends with the mission The Rescue. Then we have The Lovers for Stealing the Relic. Of course, this will be after you steal the relic from the Arasakas and everything that goes along with that. The next few you can do in any order for the most part, but it will center around going as far as you can with Panaeum, Johnny, and Takamura's storylines. Going down Johnny's side, we have The Hermit for finding Alt Cunningham. This is going down Johnny's route of wanting Rogue's help, nothing too special here. Then flipping over to Takamura's side, we have the Wheel of Fortune for interrogating Anders Hellman. In order to actually find Anders Hellman, you'll have to meet Panam Palmer. So, once she helps you find and capture Anders, you'll be able to continue missions with her, which brings us to Panam's side of things. Life of the Road is for completing Panam Palmer's storyline, which ends after you're welcomed into the family of the Aldecaldos. Now we'll be done for her for a while now until we get to the end of the main story. Now jumping back over to our boy, Takamura, we have the High Priestess for talking with Hanako Arasaka. Of course, you'll unlock this after the search and destroy mission with Takamura where you end up capturing Hanako. You died. One thing to make sure that you do when you're going through this mission is after you're raided, you'll need to go up and rescue Takamura. He has to survive this mission for one of the ending achievements. Then swapping over to Johnny's achievements, we have Breathtaking for collecting all of the items that once belonged to Johnny Silverhand. There are seven of these and you'll be able to start getting them once you get the Tapeworm story mission. You'll get his tank top automatically during this mission and then you'll be able to move on to the mission Chippin' In. During this mission, you'll automatically get his aviators, his jacket, his gun, and at the end of the mission you'll be able to get his car. Then you'll have to go to the gig Psychofan here in Haywood. Once you get into the apartment you'll need to loot this suitcase to grab his pants. This one is missable as you can't come back to this apartment after this gig so be sure to grab the pants before you go up. Then lastly we have his shoes which you can get during the gig Family Heirloom located here in Westbrook. You'll need to loot this locker to grab them which happens to be the same one with the objective for the gig. After getting that one done, and putting in some work for Rogue, we can get Bushido and Chill for watching Bushido X with Rogue. Then we can go and clean up some of the side character storylines before going through and completing the different endings. Judy vs Night City is for completing Judy Alvarez's storyline. The last mission for her is when she has you join her in a wetsuit to go back to her hometown. Then we have To Protect and Serve for completing River Ward's storyline. The last mission for him will be when he has you sit and drink with him outside and gives you his gun. For the last side character story achievement we have To Bad Decisions for completing Carrie Eurodyne's storyline. 
The last mission for him is going to be when he has you go with him on a boat to vandalize and burn it. Now we can move on to the different endings. With all of the work that we've already put in with these characters earlier, you'll be able to make a save right before our big decision and go back to that to go down the different paths. So first up, we'll get the world for completing the main storyline in general. You can do this with any of the paths, doesn't matter. Then there's the star for leaving Night City with the Aldecaldos. In order to do this one, you'll have to complete Panam's storyline, and then choose to call her for help when confronted with that decision. Then just go along with the missions to the end of the game and choose for V to keep his body. But be sure to make a save before you have to make that last choice. So then we'll reload that save to get Temperance for letting Johnny Silverhand keep your body. You can do this for any of the endings, but just make sure that when given that final choice, you go the route of giving the body to Johnny. Next we have the Devil for helping Takamura avenge the death of Saburo Arasaka. Of course for this one you'd have to make sure that you save Takamura and cooperate with Hanako so that you can side with them when given the choice. Then we have the Sun for becoming a legend of the afterlife. This can be done by making the choice to go with Johnny's route at the end and get help from Rogue. And that covers all of the main story and side character story related missions. Legend of the Afterlife you'll get for reaching max street cred. As you grind through the game, you'll get this one naturally. There are a few missions that relate to completing all of the gigs and NCPD scanner hustles in each of the regions. These are City Lights for completing the ones in City Center, Greetings from Pacifica for the ones in Pacifica, It's Elementary for the ones in Watson, Little Tokyo for the ones in Westbrook, Mean Streets for the ones in Haywood, The Jungle for the ones in Santo Domingo, and The Wasteland for the ones in the Badlands. You'll need to complete most of the story missions and get to Street Cred 50 to have access to all of the gigs in the game. But keep in mind the side missions with the exclamation points are not needed for these achievements. As you go through doing all of those missions, you'll get Frequent Flyer for finding all fast travel data terms. This one I wouldn't worry about as you'll get it naturally doing all the other achievements. Now the rest of these are just kind of random achievements that you can get through the game, so we'll start going through each one of those. Right back at you is for killing or incapacitating an enemy who threw a grenade at you. You should get this one pretty easily while playing through the game, but if not, just keep in mind, when someone throws a grenade at you, just kill him. Stanislavski's method is for using a dialogue option related to V's life path 10 times. Then, two heads one bullet is for killing or incapacitating two enemies with the same sniper rifle shot. There are a lot of areas throughout the game where you could get this, but the area I used was here in Watson where there are two cops standing on the side of the street. For True Soldier, you'll need to kill or incapacitate 300 enemies using ranged weapons. Christmas Tree Attack is for completing a breach protocol with a minimum of three daemons uploaded. For this, you'll need to get a new cyber deck that has a larger buffer size and then get all three options done during a breach protocol. Then speaking of cyber mods, Full Body Conversion is for installing at least one implant in each system and body part. For this, you can either get parts that you'd like to use for the rest of the game, or just make a save, buy a bunch of parts, and reload that save. Now one of the cyber mods you could get is the Mantis Blade Arms. That one can help you get True Warrior for killing or incapacitating 100 enemies using melee weapons, and it's a pretty fun way to do so. Then for Gun Fu, you'll need to kill or incapacitate 3 enemies in quick succession with a revolver or pistol in close combat. You can do this when you go through Johnny's flashbacks, John Wick style, or with any close group of enemies. The place that I ended up doing it was here in Santo Domingo. Auto Jock is for buying all vehicles available for purchase. I have the full list of all the vehicles pulled up here, which is going to end up taking 1,722,000 eddies, and you'll need to be street cred level 50 to buy them all. You can generally pick up every item you find and sell them to make a lot of the money needed for this, but if you end up needing to get more money, I made a video on one method you could use, which I call recycling. 
Basically, you just buy cans from vending machines and break them down into parts to sell. For 10 out of 10, you'll need to reach the max level in any skill. You can focus on a certain type of weapon or something like that to try to level a skill that way throughout the game, or you can also grind something like crafting. If you grind crafting, you can essentially do the same thing that I laid out with the recycling method, but make sure that you take all of the crafting perks that get you extra resources and allow you to craft without using resources. You'll want to convert common parts into uncommon parts, then into rare parts, and finally craft a bunch of guns with those which you can sell or break down. You might notice that that takes a very long time. So what I ended up doing, and what you could also do, is if your keyboard supports it, make macros to simulate you clicking to craft, and you hitting F to grind those vending machines. That'll make it a little simpler for you to do, and will also keep you from breaking your keyboard. Then for more crafting, we have Master Crafter for crafting three legendary items. This one is pretty self-explanatory. At the very least, you'll need to pick up the perk to allow you to craft legendary items. For Must Be Rats, you'll need to perform the Distract Enemies Quick Hack 30 times without drawing attention to yourself. Then, The Wandering Fool is for finding all of the tarot graffiti for the job Fool on the Hill. This is pretty straightforward and it has its own mission associated with it, but I also made a guide going through all of the locations of the tarot cards if you want to check that one out. For Gunslinger, you'll need to shoot an enemy grenade in midair with a revolver. This may take a few tries to get down, but just go to groups of enemies and try to allow them to throw grenades at you so that you have a chance to shoot at midair. V for Vendetta is for reviving with second heart, and killing or incapacitating the enemy who killed you within 5 seconds. For this, you'll need to at least have body 16, and be at street cred level 49 to buy the second heart. Then just let an enemy kill you, get up, and quickly kill that enemy. For the quick and the dead, you'll need to kill or incapacitate 50 enemies while time is slowed. The two main ways I found of doing this is either with a synaptic accelerator implant which slows down time when an enemy detects you, or using the Karenzikov implant which slows down time when you aim while sliding or dodging. Rough landing you can get for having Berserk Cyberware active and performing a superhero landing to kill or incapacitate two enemies. For this, a pretty easy spot to do it is here in Westbrook. You'll want to get up on the roof, make a save, bring the difficulty down to easy because it's kind of hard to kill them without that, and then jump over the drones and do a superhero landing to destroy them. Then for I Am The Law, you'll need to complete all Cyber Psycho sightings. These are in a mix of gigs and side quests throughout the game, which I have a video guide that goes over all of these and their locations. Finally, for the last achievement, we have a Daemon in the Shell for killing or incapacitating three enemies with one detonate grenade quick hack. You can find this from looting, or if you have 16 intelligence, you can take a perk to craft epic quick hacks in the quick hacking skill to craft it. Then just walk up to a group of enemies, detonate a grenade on them, and boom, you have the achievement. And with that, we now have 100% of the achievements in Cyberpunk 2077. Let me know in the comments below how your playthrough went, or stop by my community discord and let us know on there. And if you liked the video or found it helpful, be sure to like, subscribe, and comment down below with what games you'd like me to cover next.